Hound, right here, Prime. Scout the area. See if you can locate the Decepticons. Just turn me loose, Prime. I'll sniff them out. Good luck. What is up, Transformers family? Welcome back to another one of George Reviews. I am the 80s Transformer fan, and today I'm continuing my countdown of Hasbro 1984 catalog of Transformers. I've been counting down these figures from 1 to 25. I'm up to number 11, Autobot Howl, presented to us by Hasbro in 1984. This one is actually uh, a later 85 version because he has the rub symbol right there. But before I get into his Hasbro storyline, I want to back up and tell you that Hasbro got the licensing to make these figures from a company called Takara in Japan. In that Diaclone line, the subline that they were under were car robots. And Hound is unique in that Diaclone line because he is one of the few figures that only came in a specific color. Most of the other Transformers that I have counted down and will count down came in multiple colors, but you can only find how or the figure that became how in this military green and it wasn't until he got an encore i believe it was e hobby reissue where he was released as another character where he actually got a palette swap and a color change where he was uh i believe it was desert how drop a pick in okay everybody so when hasbro got a hold of the license and the figure and they created the character how they also created a bio for him and the tech spec for him, the things that they wanted us to know about the character that they imagined. And his bio is as follows. His alliance is Autobot. His function is Scout. His model, observe everything, remember even more. Hound loves the natural wonders of Earth. Prefers it to Cybertron. Brave, fearless, loyal. Secretly desires to be human. Uses turret gun as radar, scope, infrared radiation collector. Tracks machines as well as humans. Hologram gun projects three-dimensional grid laser light topographical maps. Vulnerable to thermal and electromagnetic interference. His tech spec or technical readout is as follows. His strength is a five. His intelligence is an 8. His speed is a 5. His endurance is a 7. His rank is a 6. His courage is a 10. His firepower is a 3. And his skill level is a 9. How has pretty good numbers with the exception of his firepower being a 3. So pretty solid character all around. Okay, the vehicle mode that they based this figure on from Takara and the Car Robo line is a Mitsubishi J59 Jeep. And let's take a look at that Jeep. Bring him a little bit closer. He has what I believe is the General Stars Autobot logo. This is the rub sign version. One giant star right here. He has the chrome mirrors on the side. He has the winch in the front of the grill. Nice molded in, molded in bumper, molded in license plate area. He has chromed out headlights. There's some detailing in the grill. I think these are like fog lights down here. Turn to the side. He has some nice large rubber tires with chrome rims. Front and back. He has two seats. They actually articulate. They fold down. Um, I guess because of the transformation, they fold back as well. He has a spare tire on the back, at least a spare tire cover. The gas can on the back, a little molded in license plates right there with a sticker on it. He has some painted tail lights. I'm scraping on this one on mine. The entire back portion back here is die cast on how. And the same thing on this side. Flipping them over, we're going to look at the stamping on here. It says Takarako LTD Japan 1980-1982. And it says Hasbro 1980-1982 as well. You can see the screws underneath. You can see his waist underneath, and you can see his hands just hiding above the wheel well. So how is a very, very convincing Jeep. The only thing that's really broke up in this mold is you can see his head dug down right there. It's kind of obvious there's something in the middle there. 
I'm gonna put them down, see how he rolls. I, um, these rubber tires on this guy, how is a very well designed figure. I think this is one of the best 1984 figures, period. He's one of my absolute favorite figures, and I will get into that. He rolls great. In the Diaclone line, um, these figures weren't sentient beings. You would take a pilot, and the pilot would uh, drive around in a car. These little seats here, they weren't just to um, flush out the design of the vehicle. They actually had a purpose. The guy would get in them and sit there, drive the car, even though there's no steering wheel. But there is a dashboard. I'm just going to ignore the little guy fell out. If you can see the dashboard right here, there's no steering wheel. But there is a little dashboard. It's molded in detail on the dashboard right there. So it is present on this figure. In trouble with the little gun. So this is how I'm basically in his Jeep mode from the G1. Oh, let's take a look at his rub symbol. I got a lot of lights on, so it's already activating. But after 1984, they put the rub symbol so you can verify that it is an authentic transformer. And you would just rub it till you can see it. And if you wanted to continue rub it, it would change multicolors. As far as you can rub it, I think it turns into a dark purple if you keep going. Then it would slowly fade back because it was heat activated. Um, not really much more I can say in this mode. I don't think. Nope. Other than with the die cast over time, the die cast in the back uh, and transformation would make the back of this toy just sag. And it would suck because it wouldn't fit together that well anymore. But all toys have their issues over time. And I just thought to say that one right now. And oh, also obviously he's carrying three of his accessories in vehicle mode. Which is um, the 50 cal machine gun, the gas can, and the spare tire. Which are often lost when you try to find these figures. I'll get to that. And for a G1 figure, he has a lot of accessories. So um, I'm going to get Hound Transform, remove the machine gun, remove the spare tire, remove the gas can. And what you would do is slot him back. And again, that little die cast part's falling back on its own. Bring the die cast feet around, fold them up into place, rotate these little side panels. I guess they're the doors in vehicle mode. I don't know. But you rotate these out of the way. Then you would bring down. Then you bring down the chest and you get some automorphin in there. His head transforms for you. I believe he's the first guy to actually have some automorphin. Then you would rotate this tire out. And you get a little bit of more automorphin. His arm comes out some for you on this side. Rotate this tire out. And it will automorph this arm I think you can pull it out a little bit more and pull the arms down and we are done I think I folded the windshield down by accident I don't know but so hound down real quick and in this mode he has even more accessories he has a shoulder mounted rocket launcher um, he has a chrome holographic gun with that in his hand let's take a look at the gun real quick has a lot of detail in it I guess this is the scope on top it's pretty long it's completely chrome which is which is very sweet but if you're trying to collect and find one mint it's not that sweet and he comes with three missiles I could only find one for my figure at the time of this review and it goes right into a shoulder launcher and it should launch it's a little bit old but let's see so it does fire which is very cool and I love this figure as a child as I look for the missiles how was as advertised when you looked at how how looked just like the box art Look just like the cartoon. I mean, from his waist to his feet to his hands and the scope of the head where the weapons are positioned, he looked just like the cartoon. Let's take a look at his face. It's all silver. They didn't bother to paint the eyes. 
gorgeous chest that is the front of the truck or Jeep looks very very nice Hound has one failing in his robot mode just one and it's kind of huge and it's his arms they do not reach past the car they should have made his arms where they would slot out if he had that Hound would be the perfect 1984 Transformer he would be the best figure not character but the best figure out of the bunch because he looks just like the cartoon they didn't have to modify anything except for make his arms longer and it sucks because with the gun in his hand he really can't get it up to fire this is about as far as you get it can get it maybe I can nah nah that's pretty much it he's got he got he's got to hit people with the uh with the missile that's as far as he can get up but he is still cool very sweet look looking he has two separate legs. He's not connected via the pin like a lot of the other guys. His feet look cool. He got kneecaps. He has a waist. Has a little bit of an abdomen up here and then the chest. So he is a very, very cool looking figure. But while I'm saying that, let's go through some of the things that Hound was packaged with. I do not have his box, but I do have his packaging material. And first up, we're going to take a look at Hound's instruction booklet. The 1984 guys were in color, instruction book they were in color with the same artwork from the box. And as you can see, he looks just like his box artwork. And he looks just like the cartoon. They didn't modify this guy a hell of a lot like some of the other figures. And his box art is gorgeous. Only if his arms look as good as this, though, he would have been the perfect figure. Now let's get this book open. And this booklet is actually a pre rub version. I acquired this later to complete my figure open it up and I guess we gotta flip it over I did that sort of wrong okay it starts like this with the artwork to everything that comes with the figure you can see he comes with three missiles I'm only I only have one for this figure the launcher the spare tire and oddly enough the uh, the instruction sheet here is the diaclone instruction sheet it doesn't have the Autobot symbol anywhere and it has the J it goes on the um the spare tire cover right there and you can actually see it's two different ones this is the diaclone sticker sheet right there gas can the gun the machine gun the jeep itself and the jeep they show you how to transform it and then they show you where to put the stickers and i don't have a decoder with this guy i thought i had a decoder even though i don't have the uh, box and it shows you how to read the text back on the back of the box to reveal hound's numbers it's also packaged with the catalog. Speaking of catalog, I didn't check this guy off. And yeah, we'll do that. This is the catalog. On the back, it has the box art from every 1984 Transformer. On the back, Optimus Prime, the battle in the air against the Decepticons. And it shows you every last figure that you could collect and build your Transformer universe in 1984. And there is Hound at number 11. And coming to a little brochure, reinforcements from Cybertron. You open this little thing up and it shows you the guys you can actually order. And there is one of the most garbage ass Transformers of all time. The Power Dasher. Then the Omnibots Downshift Overdrive Camshaft. And the Time Warrior Watch you can order. Is there anything else on this side? And some more artwork from the box and a little read about. And that is it. But when I do these reviews, I check off Art about Hound on the list. There he is. So that's number 11 down, even though we're still doing the review. Just to give you some FYI, how was voiced by Ken Sansom? who also voiced Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh for many, many years. I think he's more famous for Winnie the Pooh than Hound, obviously. I can't think of anybody else uh, that he voiced right now. Maybe it'll come to me before this review is over. But anyway, let's do articulation on G1 Hound, which is not going to happen. I think I pretty much covered it just talking about other things. His arm can move back and forth. And that is it. Nothing at the waist. I guess we can move his feet. You have to move the seats to articulate his feet a little bit. And they're so heavy because the bottom is completely die cast. 
but you can do that. But other than that, you just pew, 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 and kind of voice these guys. Look, Ravage, it's Megatron. I don't have a good hound voice. But anyway, um, his head, I don't think this thing moves at all. It doesn't move. You get some automorph out of it, you get a well-designed robot, but you don't get any articulation out of hound. And like I said, Hound is one of my absolute favorite, favorite guys. And I want I'm going to give you a couple of buying tips for G1 Hound if you're in the market for this guy, especially if you're looking for him loose. Mint sealed in the box, he's going to cost you uh, over $1,200 most likely. So uh, I highly recommend buying this guy loose. He has one known reissue and there is a KO of this guy floating around. But if you're looking for the original loose... Um, when you buy this guy, purchase this figure, you want to make sure he has all of his accessories, which there are a lot. He comes with the main gun, the launcher, three of these missiles that are easily lost, uh, and his vehicle mode accessory. He comes with the 50 cal machine gun, the gas tank, and the spare tire or spare tire cover. And also vehicle mode, the mirrors are often broken off or missing or both <laughs> so uh, you want to watch out for that the tires tend to dry out and crack over the years some of them dry out so bad that they just stick on there almost as if they turned to plastic themselves you want to watch out for that you want to watch out for chrome wear and the back part where the back of the Jeep turns into his feet because this is the bottom of his feet this is usually chipped and uh, missing the paint and then it all around because he's literally standing on it in robot mode so you want to watch out for that when you're buying this figure um, and a lot of times the, the head has issues because sometimes the head will hang up doing this automorph transformation and it will break off and people will just set it in there and the windshield because the windshield moves up and down it's actually articulated on if I mentioned in G mode a lot of times this is scratched up or cracked or the hinges are broken so you want to take a look at that when you're buying this figure and as you can see I really really love how here I have sitting I have the vintage original um, I have two reissues I love this guy so much and I have the Diaclone gig version basically the Diaclone version released in Italy um, to have a, I'm going to have a look at this real quick. I really shouldn't because I want to use it for another review. But here is the box. It says Takara 1980. Spinning it around. It's the exact same as the Diaclone box. It's just a Diaclone box box used in Italy and parts of Europe. It has a little scene of Hound or the figure that became Hound on the beach. It has the entire or most of the cast of the Diaclone figures. You can see them in their rainbow of colors. Guys that came in multiple colors. Man, that uh, this yellow trail breakers are tough out. That's a hard one to get. Anyway, I'm gonna slide him open real quick. And the thing about these things, these were never taped when they were uh, manufactured and put on store shelves. They were just slid into the box. And here he is in his super minty glory. This they didn't come with diaclone pilots. I just shoved this guy in here, and it's not the same one. He's meant to come with the uh. The white and blue guy, but when they use when they released it in Italy, they they took the pilot away and then they gave you these big gigantic safety missiles. And people complain about our safety missiles. Look at the big rubber ball on the tip of these. But yeah, here is how. Oh, and I brought up the the sticker sheet in the clip earlier and here is his diaclone sticker sheet you have two different options for the tire on the back which is cool that that was gone when it made it to america and there's a quick look at diaclone how or the gig version of diaclone how all right so let's give how the size up and the rundown treatment start off with generation one ravage here he is with Generation 1 Cliff Jumper. Here he is with upgraded Generation 1 Ironhide. Here he is next to Autobot Commander Optimus Prime. And here he is standing next to the Generation 1 Megatron mode. Here he is next to the Siege Hound. Here he is with the Quintesson Judge. And last but not least, here he is next to Frenzy. Rumble on the cartoon. 
I owe you one from Sherman Dam, Rumble. So we only saw how in the movie when Mega when Optimus Prime says Megatron must be stopped no matter the cost. And we see him for a brief second. And it's just assumed that all the 84 guys were murdered except for Bumblebee. And but we never saw this guy actually die. So my favorite howl moment probably comes to us from the pilot episode part three when he was fighting Rumble frenzy and he was like i owe you one from sherman damn rumble and rumble was like you couldn't swim what makes you think you can fight and he was like let me show you and he was like punching rumble in the ribs <laughs> like not that a robot has ribs but he was giving rumble the business like <laughs> like he picked him up and threw him against the, the cliff and would just start hammering that guy i was like well okay i can't swim but i can fight damn it no so that, that was my favorite howl moment uh, from the G1 cartoon. Not that he had a lot of moments, but he was a cool enough character with his holograms, and um, he was very, very memorable, and I really, really loved the toy. So that's my story for 1984 Generation 1. How? What is your story? Did you want this figure? Did you have this figure? Did you love this figure? Was he just all right to you? Do you have him now as an adult collector? Are you looking for him? Are you the market for him as an adult collector? And especially, if you have the KO, please let me know, um, about the quality of that figure because I looked at it several times I was going to grab it and add it just to check it out and but I can never find it cheaper than $69.99 and 70 bucks plus a little bit of shipping um, and I already have all of these I, I have passed on it but I do want to check it out so I am curious so tell me your transformer story even if it's not generation one how and you've just watched the review where every toy has a story Transform!